Good morning. Let me first thank the organizers of the forum for giving me this opportunity to speak, and to speak on the topic of the myth of Han China, whatever it does mean. Time demands that I get directly to my hypothesis that the myth of Han China as a homogeneous and a harmonious and a stable society is a particularly insidious myth that blinds us from the reality of Chinese society. It is a shroud of deceit, carefully woven by the CCP to conceal its true intent. That intent is to reduce Chinese society to a fiefdom of slaves to an all-powerful state. The myth of Han China is as racist as the idea of a white America, as repulsive as apartheid in South Af Africa, potentially as cataclysmic for China as the myth of Aryan supremacy was to Germany and the world. The CCP employs the vast resources of China's wealth to perpetuate this myth of a harmonious and a stable Han China as means for rationalize its otherwise illegitimate claim to power. It craftily weaves the threat of homogeneity, harmony, and stability into a fabric of beguiling lies and half-truth that cover the harsh realities of repression from the world, all too meager to look the other way. A wonderful example of how the Chinese government weaves the myth of Han China is the article written by former Hong Kong chief executive Tong Chi Hua in celebration of the 60th anniversary of the PRC and published in the Washington Post on October 31st, 2009. In the article, Mr. Tong reflects on the enormous progress made by China since the establishment of the PRC in 1949. He states that at no other point in history has so much improvement been made for so many people in such a short period. He attributes this progress to the harmony and the stability brought to Chinese society through the enlightened policies of the CCP. This article ran unopposed in the op-ed section of the Washington Post. Unfortunately, the view of a harmonious and a stable and a prosperous China created through the enlightened governance of the CCP hands over the corridors of a power policy making in Washington and other capitals around the world. This view is reinforced by thousands of lobbyists, apologists, compromised academics, all of whom are seduced in one way or another by the power and wealth of the CCP. Let us ask ourselves, where is this harmonious and stable society? Is it with the Tibetans, whose culture has been poached to the point of extinction? Is it with the Uyghurs, who are labeled terrorists, and whose young women are systematically enticed to other provinces by the promises of jobs, only to find despair and unwelcome marriages to Han Chinese men? 
Is it with farmers and the peasants whose lands are routinely seized without compensation by unscrupulous developers in collusion with corrupt officials? Is it with Christian leaders who are routinely arrested and beaten because they want to practice their faith peacefully and privately without interference of an atheist state? Where are these enlightened policy of this mythical, harmonious Han China? They are nowhere to be found. The emptiness of this myth was powerfully illustrated by the empty chair reserved for my friend Liu Xiaobo on the stage of the 2010 Nobel Peace Prize Award Ceremony here last December. For his writings on democracy, for Chad Oid, this eloquent framework for reforming Chinese society, Liu Xiaobo was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. For this same effort, the enlightened Chinese government awarded him 11 years in prison. Where are these enlightened policies of PRC, this unprecedented progress? Is it the land reform of 1950s that caused tens of millions of my countrymen to starve to death? Is it the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s and the 70s that left Chinese society in shreds for decades? Is it in the infamous one-child policy that leaves millions of marriage-aged men without women to marry and forces millions of abortions a year, causing the highest female suicide rate of any country in this world? Or perhaps we can find enlightenment in Tiananmen Square massacre of 1989, where thousands of my fellow students were killed and maimed by tanks of the People's Army. This massacre is well documented by the world, but its very existence is denied by this enlightened Chinese government. The answer to any of these questions dictates only one conclusion and proves the hypothesis that the idea of a harmonious and a homogeneous Han China is an insidious and a dangerous myth. It is a self-serving lie of a government in fear of its own people and in dread of the truth that its rule has been an unmitigated disaster, a disaster eloquently defined in Charter 8. Quote, the Chinese people who have endured human rights disasters and uncountable struggles across these same years now include many who see clearly that freedom, equality, and human rights are universal values of humankind, and that democracy and the constitutional government are the framework for protecting these values. By departing from these values, the Chinese government's approach to modernization has proven disastrous. It has stripped people of their rights, destroyed their dignity, and corrupted normal human into course. So we ask, where is China headed in the 21st century? Will it continue with modernization and the authoritarian rule? Or, or will it embrace universal human, human values, join the mainstream of civilized nations, and build a democratic system? There can be no avoiding these questions. End quote. These words from Chad Oit, published in December 2008, reverberate today around the globe, where we see popular revolts against authoritarian regimes in North Africa 
and the Middle East. There can be no avoiding this question. How much longer can we allow ourselves to be seduced by this myth of a homogeneous, a harmonious, and a stable Han China? How much longer will the Chinese people endure this enlightened government whose policies have caused the death of more people than those caused by Hitler and Stalin combined? In the words of the Soviet dissident Andrei Sakharov, our government cannot hold again to its people forever. When the arm ties, the gun falls to the ground, and a billion people rise against this enlightened government, what will that look like? With that in mind, I ask you how much longer can we afford to support this myth and the government that weaves it. Thank you.